Well, I hope y'all are excited today. I had somebody tell me this week that, oh my goodness, there's donuts right here. <laughs> this had to be Tony Blodgett. There he is. All right, I got to see. There's one donut in it. I'm going to save that for later. All right, if anybody knows has been following us on Facebook or whatever, we've been going crazy over these hot now donuts. Like, um, I'm sure y'all have experienced a hot now donut maybe all your life. Well, I didn't until in the, about the middle of December. Uh, we were coming home, and uh, we were like, okay, do you want to stop by Sweet Frogs? Do you want to get a, a donut? And I was like, oh, yeah, I've never had a hot now donut. I didn't know what it was all about. So my wife's like, it's the greatest thing ever. So we stopped by there to get a donut. You know, you see this conveyor belt, and I've never been in there. You know, you see this conveyor belt, and... These little gifts from God are just going down through there. And then I thought, okay, great, it's no big deal. And so we got, you know, a dozen of them, and we sat down there at the table, and I opened it up. And I took a bite of that hot now donut, and it was like eating a baby angel. It was like, <laughs> it was amazing. It was amazing. So my, my whole world got turned upside down by one donut. One donut. And so now it's like a, it's like a thing we just talk about. Hot now donuts, and uh, it's funny because all these people are sending me pictures of them standing in front of Krispy Kreme with the hot now sign on, <laughs> and it's like I can't get away from it. Uh, it's awesome, and it's so odd that he puts it on the stage here because we're talking about stage change and interruptions, and life gets full of interruptions, and it's not that we're on not doing anything wrong, you know, but it's just like it, we get a change. And a lot of times we think that change is, you know, it's a bad thing. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Changes can be good. If you are married, your wife is going to rearrange her furniture. It's a change. Guys can have the same thing and sit in the same spot every day all their life, but not women. We, they have to rearrange their office, have to rearrange furniture. I want to move this picture. Honey, what do you think if we change this picture and put it over there? And if the men will be honest with that, I don't care. Do not say that to your spouse. <laughs> there will be a fight coming. It's not that it's anything wrong. We just, it's just changes. And that's what I loved about this whole series, Take the Stage. That we've said, we've said all month that we're going to man up and we're going to take the stage. It's right before us. We're going to take the stage. And, and that's good. And many of you here today, you have accepted that responsibility. You said, you know what? I'm going to take the stage. I'm going to take responsibility. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the stage. But a lot of times what we'll do is we'll say it verbally. Like, okay, I'm going to take the stage. I'm going to take the stage. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to take the stage. But then from then on, we don't know where to start. And that's my trouble. I don't know where to start. Or I think that I'm going to head off in the right direction. Like, you're going to start on a diet and it's going to be great. And then somebody brings a donut. And you're like, oh, man. And you, you don't know where to start. I mean, where, where do you start? What is that first step? What, how is it that you go through and do this life? And, you know, where, where do you start with your stage? You know, let's recap this whole thing. We said at first beginning, the very first week of January 2015, we're going to take the stage. We're going to man it. We're going to take the stage. That's right before us. We're going to quit making excuses. We're going to take the stage. And then the next week, we learned about that no stage is too small. That we have these big stages and little stages, but there is no little stage. As long as we're doing what God's called us to do. He used a little boy's lunch to change thousands of people. And if he can do that, he can do something great in our own life. The last week we learned about something that really scares us, and it's called stage fright. We get scared up on stage. We get scared when the spotlight is on us. I guarantee you, if you've ever been pulled over by those little blue lights, your heart starts beating out of your chest and you get scared. It happens a lot. You get scared. You get this stage fright. And then we just lock up. We don't know what to do, so most times we just don't do anything. So last week we overcome our stage fright. Now here's the question that we want to ask today. And that is, how do you take the stage? How is it that we take the stage? Because we don't want it to be more than just words. We don't just want to say we're going to do it. We want to actually do it. See, it's one thing just to go out there and tell people, like, oh, I started a diet. It's great. I started a diet. Great. What are you doing? Well, I haven't actually started it yet, but I'm going to. You've done that. We, we've done that. We, we'll say things, but we don't have any follow-through whatsoever. I mean, you can't lose 20 pounds if you haven't started your diet. You understand what we're saying? You, you've got to start somewhere, but where do you start? Where do you, where do you start taking a stage at? How do you do it? How is it that you go through and not do the stage that God's called you to be? I mean, I'm convinced that I don't want my 2015 to be like my 2014. I want to be better. Does anybody want their lives to be better this year? You want to be better? You cannot let it be better 
when you're doing the same things over and over. You can't, you can't expect 2015 to be any different if you don't change something. So we're going to step up and we're taking a stage. Where do we start? That's what today's going to be all about. We're going to look at these guys in the Bible, and it's going to be awesome. Now, when have you ever went to church? We had a boat on stage. Is that not cool? This is the SSU, and I think it's pretty awesome, and it's going to be, make perfect sense today. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to take them out and follow this along with me. It's going to be amazing. We're talking about how do you take the stages in Matthew chapter 4, and I, I love this scripture. My girls aggravate me all the time because I say this is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I said, Daddy, you say that over every one of them. I said, it's awesome. That's why I love the Bible. It's so cool. You can go anywhere you want to, but we're going to be at Matthew chapter 4, and this is awesome. I love this. This is where Jesus calls these, these guys out. And I believe God's got a word for you today, and it's going to be amazing. So this is Matthew chapter 4, and this is starting with verse 18. This is amazing. He says, One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter, and Andrew, and they were throwing a net in the water, for they fished for a living. Now, this is where many of us are at. We work. We work whether it be 7 to 4.30 or 9 to 5, you're working. Or you're going to school, you're a college student, or whether you're a high school, you, you're working. And this is what we get so mundane routine in. And we're working just like these disciples work. These guys. We got two people, Simon Peter, and you've got his brother Andrew. These brothers. And they were fishermen. And that's why we had to bring the boat up here. Because these guys were fishermen. And they wasn't just doing anything on the boat. They were fishing. Now, this is one thing you've got to understand. These guys were not recreational fishermen. Now, I know that if we surveyed you people, a lot of you would say, Oh, yeah, I like to fish. Catch me a great big old bass hanging on the wall. Yeah, it's all good. And we're recreational. These guys were not recreational. They made their living by fishing. Now, first of all, that would be pretty wicked awesome to be able to fish for a living. I mean, would you not like to be out on the water every day fishing with your feet propped up? Well, first of all, your feet ain't going to be propped up. Hard work. Because if you ain't catching anything in your nets, you're going to be hungry. So these professional fishermen out here, and I love this because they had their net, and they were here out here in their boat, and here they are, they're just fishing. They're doing their job. Fishing. Catching fish. Because that's what fishermen do. They catch fish. I mean, you can't be a fisherman if you're just sitting out, chilling out on the boat. The only way you can be called a fisherman is if you're actually catching fish. Now some of our dads and our granddads, they have these great big old fishing stories, you know. My dad's in Florida and he tells me all the time how many fish he's catching and it's awesome. But you've got to be catching fish before you can be a fisherman. So these guys were active fishermen. They were on the boat. They were doing this every day. They get out on the boat and they go fishing every day. They get out on the boat and they go fishing every single day. And this is what they've done. But here's what the most important part is. And that's why I love this last part of this verse. For they fish for a living. And right now you're like, well, I'm not, I'm not a fisherman. No, you're not. Some of you, are, you work in factories, whether it be an Eastman, whether it be a Tempur-Pedic, you're working in a factory. That's why you are making your living. Others of you, you work in the school system, or you're on your own business. Others of you, you are students, but you're doing your life and you're doing your thing. Just like these disciples were. They were minding their own business, doing their work. Operating the boat. I mean, how cool would it be to be operating a boat? You're out here every day and you fish. I mean, you know, it's got to be awesome. This is how you get paid. But here's the thing. It wasn't just awesome about it. They had their nets and they were actually using them. They were doing their job. We don't see them complaining. We don't see them fussing at their boss. We don't see them talking bad about their wives. We don't see them doing it. All we know is, is that they were doing their job fishing for a living. Doing their job. And this is where we find ourselves. We're going through life and we're doing our life. We're doing our thing. And not that we're doing anything wrong. Just like these disciples. They wasn't doing anything wrong. They were just doing their job. But there's one thing that's most important that we cannot overlook. That they were doing this for their living. And if we are going to take the stage in our lives, then it's time for us to step up our role in our lives that we're living right now. Now what does that mean for us? They fish for a living. What is it that you do for a living? Because it's time for you to do it the very best you possibly can. Step up your role. That if we're going to be used by God and we're going to take the stage, we're going to take advantage of the stage that we're doing, then we have got to be doing our role right now the very best we possibly can. That means that mom and dads, you guys need to put everything you've got into your marriage. Those of you who have kids, you need to step up that role and you need to invest in those kids. Because someday they're going to be changing your diapers. I know it's funny, but they're going to be one taking care of you. I mean, I want to be good to my kids because I want them to treat me like a king when I get old. 
I mean, don't you? I want them to bring me donuts when I can't get up. I want them to be taking care of me. But if you're not investing all you can into your kids, how do you think they're going to treat you when you get old? Step up your role. Because this is what's so important of this. I love this. Because you got these guys in here, they're other fishermen. They're doing this, doing the very best that they can. And as they're doing this, here's how we know that they were doing their job. Check out this next verse. This is verse 19. They're right here, they were fishing, they were active fishermen. And Jesus called out to them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. They were doing their job. And then, bam, while they were doing their job, Jesus called them up to another stage. See, they were already on one stage and that was the boat. But now, Jesus had come to them and he was calling them up to another stage. They wasn't doing anything wrong. As a matter of fact, they were doing everything right. They were fishermen. Now, I've already said this before during this, during this series. I know that these guys, these fishermen, they were roughnecks. That means that they had ugly mouths. And I guarantee you that if somebody was in their territory fishing, that they were going to let them have it. I guarantee you that Peter got in a fight or two or ten. He got in a lot of them. He had, he had not only a foul mouth, but he was hot-headed. He was tempered. And some of you are sitting here right now, and you're the exact same way. And you got somebody else telling you that God can't use you. God can't, God can't do nothing with you. Yes, he can. But your first step is to fulfill the role that God has given you right now. Do your stage right now. God can't bless you. He can't call you up to another stage when all you're doing is sitting around with your hands in your pocket complaining about your wife. Get off your lazy bum and do your job. Then God can call you up to another stage. See these fishermen, they were out here and they were using the net. They wasn't sitting out on the boat with their feet propped up saying, God, send us some fish. They were actively fishing. Because you can't be a fisherman and let you catch some fish. You can't be a good husband while you're sitting on the couch. You can't be a good wife when all you're doing is nagging. And you can't invest in your kids when you won't get down on the floor and play with them. You can't expect a promotion at your job when all you do all day long is run your mouth about your boss. Do your job the very best you possibly can. I used to love to watch wrestling. And one of the most awesomest wrestlers ever was The Rock. And he had this saying, know your role and shut your mouth. <laughs> you remember that? That was like 10 years ago. He said it all the time. I loved it. Know your role and shut your mouth. We need to know our roles. Step up. I mean, step up and do our roles the very best we possibly can. Because here's what you need to understand. God does not call couch potatoes. You will never see that in the Bible. As you look through the Bible and as you open it up and you start reading, God never calls lazy people. He calls people who are actively doing their jobs right now. He calls mom and dads. He calls fishermen. He calls people that are actively doing what they're doing right now the very best they possibly can. And if we want to be used by God, the first step that we need to do, the first thing, you know, how do you take your stage? Step up your role right now. You do your role right now the very best you possibly can. But, but, but I want to be like that guy. You know, I want to be like that. Great. Then be a good dad right now. Great. You want to be over here? Great. Then you need to fulfill your role right here, right now. I don't care if you're bagging groceries, if you're parking cars, or if you're a janitor. You do it the very best you possibly can. And you watch what God does with you. Unless you're willing to do your very best right now, God cannot call you to something else. Right now, the very best you possibly can. Right now. Then you watch what God calls you to. Amazing stuff. Amazing. Oh, well, yeah, you're right. This is, this is good. But then step up your role, but I don't understand. I mean, here I am and I'm doing my job, but what do you... I mean, that's okay. So God's going to call me to another stage. I need to step up my role. Great, I'm going to step up my role. But see, there's more to it than that. Because a lot of times we don't have the ears to hear. Now listen to what happens, okay? Again, we're going to read this again. This is verse 19. So you've got Peter and Andrew out here and they're fishing. You know, this is their job. This is their livelihood. But look at verse 19. When Jesus, he called out to them, come follow me and I will show you how to fish for people. Now first of all, this is a weird statement. You're talking to professional fishermen here. And you're saying, okay, I'm going to call you to be fishing for people now. They've done something here that we have a bad thing doing. We have a hard time doing. And that is listening. We're, we're not very good listeners. Like we, we hear people but we don't know what they're saying. And we have four kids 
And uh, sometimes they talk so fast and they're looking right at me, right in the eye. And they're talking to me like, Daddy, can I blah, 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 blah. And all I hear is blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, I know you're speaking, but I have no idea what you're saying. I, I, I have no idea. Have you, ever, have you ever done that? I mean, like, you're going to have to say it again. And they're going, okay, Daddy, can we? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, honey, what? And finally, they'll grab me with their hands by the cheeks, and they're going, Daddy, can we eat a snack? Yeah, yeah, okay, you can. <laughs> Husbands, what is the fastest way that you can get on your wife's nerves? Don't listen. You be into that football game or, or being just being brain dead on the couch and you just not listen. And your wife's carrying on a complete conversation. You go, huh? What would you say? I guarantee you that she's going to be angered. Don't listen. These guys are doing their job. Now, I, I'm good at doing one thing at a time. I, I'm good at that. But you give me two things to do at a time and I, I struggle with that. I'm going to do one thing really well and I'm not going to do the other. I can either talk to somebody or watch TV. I cannot do both. <laughs> cannot. I don't care if it's a football game or if it's a movie on Lifetime Network. I can do one thing at a time. One thing. These guys were fishing. And as they were fishing, I want you to understand that as they were fishing, as they were doing this road, Jesus called out to them. Hey guys, come and follow me. Now, we know that they listened. Here's the thing. They wasn't just hearing with their ears. They wasn't just pretending like they're hearing like sometimes we do. They actually listened. Now, here's how we know we li they listen. And if we want to understand, if we want to be caught up to the next stage, then we've got to listen. But here's how we know that they listened. Verse 20, it says, And they left their nets at once, and they followed him. We know that they listened because they they done something. They, they, they done it. This is an amazing story. Because here they are. They're professional fishermen. And here comes Jesus. Now I want you to understand Jesus at this time was about 30 years old. How would you like it if a 30 year old hot shot young guy came up to you and said, Hey, quit your job and follow me. That's what happened. Here they were actively fishing out, catching fish because that's what fishermen do. They catch fish. And here comes this 30 year old guy named Jesus. And says, Hey, come follow me and I'm going to... I'm going to teach you how to fish for people. They listen. They listen. They hear they had they. At, I mean, at, I mean, they left their nets at once and followed him. Now, here's what's crazy about this. If I'm a professional fisherman and I've got this guy coming up to me, and he's called me to leave my job, I'm going to have some questions for him. Are you not? I mean, I'm going to have. I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to have a little talk with Jesus now. Now, where is it that we're going to be making our money at? I mean, I, I got a car payment, and you know, I got a wife. She likes to wear, you know, nice things. She doesn't have to have the best things, but you know, something. I mean, we like to eat. Now, where, 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 where are we going to be making money? I mean, could you imagine, you know, Peter and Andrew having this conversation among themselves and say, "Now, are we going to make money fishing for people? I mean, do we use a net or do we hook them? I mean, how how do we how do we fish for people? Guys, they didn't ask no questions, Joe. All they did. Jesus called them, and they just said, okay. And they, they turned, and at once they followed. I mean, not even one question for Jesus? I mean, even when me and my wife were planning to get married, I had a lot of questions for her. Now, you're going to keep your job, right? The house is going to be clean, and, you know, we're going to have food. There's going to be meat on the table, right? Meat, not just noodles. I mean, we're going to have some meat, right? I mean, you got some questions. There's no questions. I mean, here they are. They're in their boat, actively with their net. And he calls out, hey, guys, I want you to come and follow me. I'm going to show you how to fish for people. And uh, they don't even ask, say anything to each other. I mean, they don't even say, hey, what, what, what do you think? I don't know. What, what do you think? I mean, that's what guys do, right? I mean, they, that, that, I'm just going to tell you, that's what we do. <laughs> What do you think? What do you think we ought to do? I don't know. What, what do you think? I'm going to do whatever you do. No, I'm going to do whatever you do. No, go ask, go ask your wife. I ain't asking my wife. She's going to think I'm nuts if I do. I mean, there's no conversation whatsoever. Immediately, I mean, immediately, these guys just turn and they, they follow him. That's how we know that they listened. And, and if we want to step up to our stage, we have got to have the ears to listen when God speaks. Now, what does that look like? For some of us, we need to start going to church and be regular. You can hear from God anywhere else. You can. 
But in the, in the church setting is when we're all gathered together. And then the Bible tells us, assures us, that when we gather together under the name of Jesus, that he's right here in our very presence. Even right here in this building that used to be a car lot and used to be a horse bedding track. Right now, God is right now in our very midst. And he's speaking unto you. Amen. That's the best part about church. It ain't so we can come and see and show off our clothes or our ride. It's about Jesus. Amen. And he speaks to us. Guys, he speaks to me. And if God is speaking to me, he can sure speak. If God can speak to a redneck cussing sailor, he can speak to you. Amen. How can you hear from God? How can you listen to God? Come to church. Now, there's one very important way we can, we can hear from God. And as I, we open up our Bibles and we just start reading. I mean, amazing things when we just read, happen when we just read our Bible. I mean, just reading your Bible. Now, don't get me wrong. You need to start. I mean, you can read John 3, 16 so many times, but you need to try to open up your horizons a little bit. Read something else. You like murder? Man, you need to get into the book of the Old Testament because there are some murders going on in there. It's amazing. <laughs> You, you, you like, you know, this whole, like, mischievous acts and weird stuff? Get in the Bible because it's all over the place. I, I'm talking sex scandals and everything else. It's in the Bible. We're going to be talking about a little bit about that next month in February. Join us then. We're going to be talking about sex. It's going to be awesome. But right now, you open up your Bible, I guarantee you God's going to speak to you. <laughs> Another thing we can do that we don't always do? Pray. Most of the time we only pray to God when we have a, a, a desperate need. God, should I get this job or should I not? God, should, should I do this or should I not? Should I marry him? Should I not? Should I date him? Should I not? Should we buy this car or not? I really want it. It smells new. And That's usually the only time when we pray. But what, what if we just started praying just, just to talk to God? And we actually sat down for a minute to listen for him to speak back. I was shocked whenever I heard God speak back to me. It's amazing. So how can you listen to God? There's three things you can do. There's many of other things you do. One thing that's encouraging for you to do is get some godly people around you. You need to have friends from all walks of life. I'm talking about people who love God and people who don't love God. People who are really close to Him and people that are not. Have some good godly friends. That's one way that God can speak to you is through people. Good people. People that care about you and people that care about God, listen. Now, we know that these guys listened because, you know, they turned around and they obeyed. But I want to read this again because there's something really important about this. They listened. But if you pay attention to this, it's what I love. Because this next part is, I'm going to read this verse again. This is verse 20. So they, you know, they left their nets at once and they followed him. So I want you to understand this. They had their nets in hand. In hand. So if you can picture this, them out there, if you can picture them out here fishing with their nets. Now they wasn't out there using pole fishing. I mean, they were wanting to catch, a, I mean, a buttload of fish. So they were using nets to catch as many as they possibly can. And here they are as Peter and Andrew. They got their nets. They got their nets. And when Jesus called them, hey guys, I want you to leave that and come and follow me. I, I want you to leave that. I want you to leave this job. I want you to follow me. I am going to show you how to fish for people. So they have their net, and here, this is amazing what they did. They left the net, they just, they left it, and they went. No questions asked, they left. And if we want to take the stage in our life, if we want to do this, I mean, there's three things that we need to do. One thing, one thing that we have most desperately got to do, I mean, we have got to do, is fulfill our stages right now, no matter what profession you're in. Do it right now. But also what we need to do, we need to listen and hear God. I mean, we need to be able to, to listen and, and hear when He speaks to us so we'll know what to do. Because I'm married. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to retire. I, I'm hoping I can retire when I'm about 96. I'm hoping to retire someday. I ain't got it all figured out, so I need to listen to God. Do you understand? I'm raising four girls. I need to listen to God. <laughs> but this next part is where we really struggle at. This one word, obey. Because as God speaks to us and as we read his word, we have questions. But God, how, how is this going to work out? And, and how can we do this? But these disciples, these professional fishermen, they don't ask anything. They don't even say a word. They just left them that and, okay, let's go. How, how can they leave their job and follow him? And here's how. 
how, how can you how can you take the stage and obey God even when it doesn't make sense? Here's how. It's where faith comes in. Faith. Now many of you faith looks like it looks a lot different. But there's one common denominator in faith, and I'm going to share this verse with you. This is Hebrews. This is Hebrews chapter 11. It's, listen to this. It says, Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen, and it gives us assurance about things that we cannot see. That means that we're following somebody, we're following Jesus, even when we don't know where he's leading us. I mean, that's what he told the disciples. Hey, guys, I'm going to teach you how to fish for people. And they're like, okay. And they go, not knowing what in the world that looks like. Now, when I said I do when I got married, I thought I knew what marriage looked like. I, I did. I thought it was going to be awesome, and it was going to be cupcakes, and it was going to be love, and it was going to be awesome. I was in for a rude awakening because it was nothing like that. It was tough and hard. That's where, that's where our faith comes in. That we're, we're following after something. We're following God even when we can't see the road ahead of us. See, I like assurance in my life. I like to know what I'm doing. I want to make sure that when I take that job, I want to make sure that I know how much money I'm going to be making. I mean, that just makes good sense. But when it comes to God in our stages, we do it just following Him. Just following Him. So I spoke with a pastor this week, and he came up to me, and he said, Man, I think it's nuts what you guys are doing. Been meeting in the, down at the Colonial Downs. Like, yeah, it's been, it's been awesome. It's been awesome. He said, could you just tell me right fast? I mean, what, what, is, what is that like? What is that like? I said, man, it's been an amazing ride. I said, I'm sure it has, but what has it been like? He said, I've learned the difference between walking by faith and not by sight. This is where we struggle at when it comes to obeying God. We want to have it all figured out. But if we have it all figured out, there's no faith involved. It's based upon facts. Amen. I want to live my life based upon faith. I want to hear these words. Because someday we're all going to die. Like it or not, we're all going to die. And I want to, hear, I want to hear these words from God. When you walk in through those pearly gates of heaven, I want to hear these words that says, Well done, good and faithful servant. Guys, you're not going to hear, Well done. <laughs> We will not hear well done living a life based upon facts. The only way we can hear well done is when we're living a life based upon faith. When we're just walking. We can't hardly see in front of us. But we just know He's the one who's leading us. How is it you can take the stage in your life? How is it that you can take the stage and, and own your responsibilities? Well, first, step up your role. Know it and do it well. Listen to God. Have the ears to listen to God. And this third thing, obey. And I know what some of you are thinking. This ain't going to work, yo. I, I mean, it might have been good for Peter and for Andrew, but it, it, this is, ain't going to work for me, you know. That may have been good for my mom or, or my dad, but this, is, this ain't going to work for me. Yeah, it can. That's why I like this next verse. That's why I like this. He said, this is verse 21. A little further up the shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John. And they were sitting in a boat with their father Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called them too. And they immediately followed him, leaving their boat and their father behind. Now, I think this is amazing. Now, I love my dad. And I could just imagine. I've been fishing with my dad several times. And I could just imagine them on here. And again, they were here, these guys. And you got James and John here. They're not actually fishing this time, but they're working, okay? They're, they're fixing their net. Because as you're fishing, you know, the, your net can get broken. And as it's been in the water and out in the sun, and it can get dry rotting. You have to repair your net. So here they are. They're working. They're actively repairing their nets with their dad, who is their boss, okay? Not only is he their dad, but he's their boss at the job. And here they are. They're repairing their nets. And then Jesus walks by. And he says, hey, guys, James, John, come with me. I want you to. So already you got, you got Peter and Andrew walking along. And then all of a sudden he stops and he calls, hey, I want you to. Both of you come with me. And with their dad in the boat. They don't even say goodbye to their dad. Hey, dad, we're leaving you and following Jesus. All they do, they take their nets, okay? They take the nets and they toss it aside. And immediately, immediately, they followed him. I mean, if I'm a dad, I got some issues with this. James, you know, John, how are you going to make money? 
John, you know you got a wife at home and a baby on the way. What, what are you doing? Nope. I'm going to follow Jesus. Because that is what walking by faith is all about. I don't know the path. But I know the one who's leading the path. And that's Jesus. We need to quit doubting God for the victories he's already given us and just follow him. Amen. Some of us, we are, we are in so much doubt that we are doubting God and he's already giving you the victory right now. You're, you've already got it. You're praying for a victory in your marriage and he's already given you that. Now own up your role and be the best husband you can be. Own up your role and be the best wife you can be. Quit praying for your crazy kids and start being the parent that God's called you to be. It's time for us to own up our role. And we would walk by faith and not by sight. Peter and Andrew, James and John, here's his four disciples. You think, okay, that, but you're still talking about four disciples. I mean, but you don't understand, you know. I go to work, I do the same blessed thing over and over and over. I sit at home all day long and all I do is nurse a baby on my breast and change dirty diapers. That's all I do. God can use you too. In Luke chapter 1, God calls a 14-year-old Virgin Mary to give birth to the Savior of the world. You read on over, in John chapter 4, God calls a woman who's been married four times and now she's shacked up with a guy and God calls her and she spreads the news about Jesus and an entire town got saved because one woman had the faith to believe in God. You can read on through. In John chapter 3, Jesus had this conversation with Nicodemus. God used him and he became a follower. In one of the first lights, he was the one who helped take Jesus off the cross and bury him in a tomb. That was Nicodemus. You read on in Acts, you read on over in Acts chapter 4, especially through chapter 4, verse th through uh, chapter 16, you're going to learn about Paul. Paul killed people. And God changed his life and he started following Jesus. And God used him to spread the news all about Jesus. It started these churches everywhere. God used this roughneck Peter to start the church. What can God do through you if you say, I'll take my stage? Whatever it is you want me to do. Not that you're doing anything wrong right now. Just like these disciples, they weren't doing anything wrong. Here they are, they're fishermen. And they fish for people because they leave the fish for fish because that's what they do. But now they're going to leave that behind and fish for people. And they left their nets and they started following after Jesus. Us and our lives. We want to take the stage in our lives. That's what we must do. Quit making excuses. Quit praying for another man in your life when your husband's at home. You be, you, be, you be a woman worth fighting for. You be a husband. Don't be lazy. You be a husband worth fighting for. And you watch what God does. Amazing. Invest in your kids. Quit fussing and ragging on your boss and do your job. If you quit complaining, you get done faster. Do your job. Now, how does this play out with us? Because I know what we still, we, we still have doubts. We still have fears. These disciples, they did. They most certainly had doubts. They most certainly had fears in their life. A few, a few months later, if you keep reading through the Bible, a few months later, these disciples, they're scared to death. They're in a boat. Oddly enough, they're in a boat. And they're scared for their life. And Jesus is asleep. He's asleep. And the disciples are going to each other. What are we going to do? We're going to die. And then they go wake up Jesus. And he says, you guys have no faith whatsoever. And all he does, he stands up at the bow of the boat. And he says, peace be still. And instantly, the water is calm. What could happen in our lives if we would step up our roles? If we would take the stage. Could you imagine what kind of marriages we would have? I get, the divorce rate would go down. And here's sadly enough. The divorce rate of churchgoers is higher than divorce rate with people that don't go to church. Is that not sad? That is sad. We need to know our roles. Step up our roles. And do the very best we possibly can. Could you imagine what kind of workplaces we would have? Could you imagine what your boss would come and say to you? He's like, man, what happened? You started working hard. You quit complaining. I mean, your, your productivity has doubled. I will give you a raise. Oh, all right, I can handle it. I mean, would you not like to have a raise? Then do your freaking job and quit complaining. You want your wife to brag on you? Then give her something to brag about. <coughs> give her something to brag about. You want to be proud of your kids? <laughs> Invest in your kids. They can't grow up on their own. 
They're going to learn a lot at school without you. Invest in them and show them. Show them what a marriage looks like. Show them what kind of spouse they need to be looking for. Show them. Invest in them. And you watch what God does with your family. You watch what God does to your life. If you step up your role. Listen as he calls. And have enough courage and faith to obey. Could you imagine what kind of church we would have if we, if we would do this? We would rock. We would rock this area. If we would step up our roles. And do what God called us to do. That's all we're asking you to do. Step up, listen, obey. It's that simple. You want to take your stage? You want to take your life to the whole nother level? I mean to a whole nother walk with God. To experience something you've never experienced before. Step up your role. Listen and obey. That's it. Yeah, but you don't, you don't understand. You don't understand my past. Yes, I do because I lived a wicked, awesome past. Back, I mean, it's bad. Okay, it's bad back there. But God's called me to a whole nother stage. So while I'm there, I'm going to do the very best I possibly can. And I know that someday, he's going to call me to a different stage. Just like he did with these disciples. These guys were here on this stage and they were doing this, they were doing this very best. And here they were, they had this job and it was awesome. And God caught them over to another stage. And they left. And they went over to this stage. You're going to have surprises in your life. You're going to wake up one morning, your wife's going to be crying, you go, oh, we're pregnant again. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> it's going to happen. <clears throat> Just expect it. If you mess around with sex, you're going to get pregnant. That's what happens. <laughs> but as you go through life, and as you're walking, and as you're doing the very best you can, you watch what God does with you. When you quit complaining and you do your very best. When you listen as he speaks to you. As you have enough guts to obey him as he speaks. I guarantee you God will change your life. He did these disciples. And that's what he did to me. He wrought me to my core. The reason you're sitting in this room today... Because over 10 years ago, he rocked me. I was doing my thing. I'm just a computer tech. That's all I am. I'm a computer geek. And if God could call a computer geek to start a church, what can he do with you? Anything he wants. And it'd be amazing. Yeah, God's got great things in store for you, but you're going to have to step up your role. You're going to have to listen to him. You're going to have to obey. You do those things, and I guarantee you God's going to rock your life. It ain't going to turn out how you expected. It'll turn out better. Because we're following the person who's leading and guiding our lives. Now there's a warning here that I want you to understand. If we're not careful, we're just going to talk about this instead of actually doing it. Don't be a talker. Anybody can talk the game. Anybody can talk that your marriage is awesome. I want to have the marriage that other people envy. I, I, I want to have the marriage with my wife that people say, man, I want what they got. That's what I want. I, I want to be the type of Christian that people look at me and say, man, if that's what a Christian looks like, then that's what I want to be. That, that's, my, that's what I want. I, my normal job that I work, I'm a computer guy, and I want to be the best computer guy that I can be, and I want people to look at me and say, wow, that's what I want to be. Give people something to want, and you watch what God does. You honor God with what you've got, and you watch what He does. So here's the warning. If we're not careful, we're just going to talk about taking the stage instead of actually taking it. We can raise our hand and say, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready to take the stage. I'm ready. But let's have some follow-through. We've said that we're going to start out 2015 taking the stage. Great. And many of you have already this month, you've told me. You've told me that this, this whole series and taking the stage, that you've owned up your role. And as you have, you've taken that step, but you're going to do the very best you possibly can. I'm proud of you. Now follow through with it. You, you do it. Now this is a hard role for us to do, especially in our society. Because right now, what we're taught to do is we do whatever we want to do. I encourage you that you say you're going to do something. Do it. No backing out. Do it. I'm ready to take the stage in my life. And I'm going to do it the very best I possibly can. The question to you is, are you just going to talk about it? Or are you going to do it? 
God calls doers. These disciples were doers. They were the people that were actively fishing. And they were actively doing their life. They were actively doing their life. So I don't care what it is in your life that you're actively doing. You do it. And all you do is say, God, here I am. Whatever you want me to do, whatever you want me to go, that's what I'm going to do. And you watch what God does through you in your life. And he'll change our world. I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes just for a moment. So we pray together. Father God, you're amazing and you're awesome. And today, God, you've challenged us. That if we're, going to, if we're going to take our stages in our lives, then we've got to do more than just talk it. We've got to step up our roles. We've got to listen to you. And we need to have enough faith to obey you. God, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would speak into us. And that we would step up, God, and do what you've called us to do. As you continue to pray, again, nobody's looking around. This is just between you and God. Some of you, you've just been talking about it this whole month. You've just been talking about it. And right now, God is calling you out of your comfort zone. He's calling you out of your comfort zone that you would step it up. That you would step up your walk with Him. That you would step up your work. That you would step up your home life. That you're going to step up your marriage. That you're going to step up and be all that you can be. You're going to give your marriage all you got. You're going to give your children all you got. And you're not just going to talk about it. You're going to actually do it. I'm going to step up my role. Those of you here today and say, yep, that's me. That is exactly me. I'm not just going to talk it. I'm going to do it. I want to pray for you because there's power in this. Hands are already going up. I want to pray for you. Hands are going up everywhere. I want to pray for you that as you step up your role, that you wouldn't just be words. The power of God will rest upon you as you do what he has called you to do. Father God, I pray for all those today that are stepping up their role, that they would do it the very best they possibly can. I leave all the results up to you, God. God, it's not, up, it's not up to us to have everything figured out. But it is up to us to own up our roles. And today, God, I pray for all the moms and dads, for all those that have jobs and all those that work at home, that as we step up, as we step up, God, that we're going to do it the very best we possibly can. And even though we're going to get surprises, we're going to get things thrown our way, we're going to honor you, God. We're going to make our bosses proud. We're going to give our wives something to brag about. And we're going to show our kids how awesome they are. As you continue to pray, there's some of you here today that the stage that you need to take is one that only you can do. Nobody can do it for you. You can't earn it. And right now, he's calling you to follow him. He's calling you to take the stage just to follow him. He's not asking you to be perfect. All he's asking you to do is just to follow him. Right now, could you, could you do that in your life? Could you, could you follow after him? Could you take the stage of your life and say, you know what, I'm going to trust Jesus with my life. Nobody's looking around. This is between you and God. He's calling you right now out of your comfort zone and to follow him. Right now, would you call it on to him? Call it on him right now and say, Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, save me from my sins. I accept your son Jesus as my Savior. Forgive me of my faults. Forgive me of my sins. Take my life. Make me brand new. Those of you who just prayed that prayer today, you're taking the stage. You've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. And nobody's looking around. This is between you and God. I just want to pray for you. If you prayed that prayer today, would you slip your hand up that I may pray for you? Would you just slip your hand up? Hands are going up. Would you, would you just slip your hand up? I just want to pray for you. Hands are still going up. I just want to pray for you as you take that stage to trust Jesus as your Savior. He's not asking you to be perfect. He's asking you to follow Him. That's all He's doing. He didn't give the disciples any other details except just follow me. Follow me. I'm going to make you fish with me. Just follow me. Just follow me. Father God, you see these hearts that have turned their lives over to you. And I pray today, God, will be a day that they never forget. That as they trust you, God, with their lives, you do an amazing work in and through them. Oh God, would you fill us up with your love. That as we leave here today, God, we're going to walk out different than when we came in. Because we've met with you. God, it's not about the boat. It's not about a stage. It's not about the worship. It's about your son, Jesus. And that's the one that we praise. May he change our lives and make us brand new. And may we give it our lives our very best and hold nothing back. It's through Jesus we pray. Amen. Would you give God some praise? I love you, God. <laughs>